In this video, I'm gonna break down the exact core strengthening and shaping drills that I have found to be the most effective with gymnasts so that you can leave here with a really great set of tools. To before we dive in though, a couple things. First, we're gonna be start doing a lot more YouTube content. So every Friday, we're gonna be cranking out videos based on community feedback for what they want to learn about. So if you really wanna stay up to date, make sure you hit the notification bell, make sure you subscribe right down below. Second, we're gonna start doing a lot more exciting giveaways for people who are watching the YouTube channel exclusively. <gasps> So the first one that's gonna start this month, if you hop down in the comment section and you put in hashtag 24 shift, which stands for 24 hours when the video comes, you're gonna be automatically entered to win some awesome prizes. So we're gonna accumulate all the people who are commenting on the first 24 hours of the YouTube video, and we're going to be giving away some awesome prizes at the end of the month. I'll share some of those details at the very end of the video here, but let's jump into it right here. So let's just kind of check out things here, right? So the first thing we wanna make sure we do is we always need some sort of basic leg lift variation. If you're working in gymnastics on your own, if you're working on it for coaching, if you're working on it for someone who is doing it with athletes they want to uh, just do on their own gym, leg lifts are really, really essential, right? These are absolutely important to make sure you develop the compression strength to do a lot of skills that gymnastics require, whether it's some leg lifts, whether it's some V-ups, all sorts of these angled things we really want to make sure we're doing. So the first thing that I really like is actually not going to be a straight leg lift. It's going to be actually a tuck up. Most people need some sort of a basic introduction here. And so this very beginning part of being able to do a very easy tuck up on a hanging position is probably where most people hang out. I think a lot of people jump right into full leg lifts, but they're swinging all over the place. Their arms are all over the place too. They're sticking their head out, right? So you, I just like these real basic, just kind of easy tuck up. These tuck ups are probably the best place to go. You can even start on something that's not a full leg lift by doing an angle here. So what you can do is set up some sort of a block on the bottom here and do an angled leg lift, right? I love these. These are super helpful. So you can see here, she's on an angled block that's been stacked up and by angling it at 45 degrees, it's still super hard on the core, but it's still very, very effective, right? So now what we're doing is we're letting somebody really keep their ears covered, really get that full compression, and we're allowing someone to really control the slow down part. Now, the thing here is that we want to make sure there's some couple common errors we don't want to see, okay? So number one, we don't want to see someone's head going all over the place. You really got to keep the ears covered and keep the eyes neutral so that the core is doing the work and not so much the arms, okay? Number two is you don't want someone to be swinging, right? We don't want momentum to be what's getting someone's legs all the way up to the bar. So a lot of people will do these on a stall bar to keep that leg from, uh, you know, flopping around at the bottom. But I think in any version, that you do tuck angled, whatever you want, you really have to make sure that the legs are not swinging around too much. Okay. And then number three, we really want to make sure we're in a rounded, hollowed compression, which is why I like these angled leg lifts because they really let someone tuck under, really let someone hollow under because those are going to be more effective on the core. If someone is doing a full leg lift and they're not quite ready for that, they might actually have quite a big arch in their lower back. They're using their hip flexors more rather than really rounding their core all the way under. Okay. So that's the kind of things I would just look out for there. Now, what do we do for sets and reps here? I really like three sets for these because it's really easy to just fly through them and not do them with control. So you're looking at three sets of six to eight. I think a one second tempo up and down is really good. And I really like at least two times per week, right? People who are training more, you know, advanced work, more elite work, they might do these every day. But for most people, I think two, two times a week, because there'll be many other core exercises that are good. I'd probably start there first. The next one that I actually like is kind of going to be something more of a slide through. Okay. So what I mean by a slide through is I'll show you the video here. We're going to set somebody up on panel mats or between two blocks, and we're going to actually have a slider on their feet. And you can see it when she pushes out into the front here, right? So the slider goes on their feet. And what this allows someone to do is really work on this compression and this tuck through aspect in two pieces. One is we have the extension part in the front, which is really, really good to open up the hips and work the lower back as well. But then obviously we have this compression part in the middle, which is really where we're working hard to get the core completely folded in here. So it requires quite a bit of lower core strength and that compression strength is then being worked on. But then we also get the added bonus at the back here is we're working a nice tall plank. Okay. So I I really love these, right? To go all the way back and forth and I'll let it play a couple times while I'm talking, but I really love these just to kind of go back and forth. And the good thing about these is you can really scale these to whatever athletes need, right? So Taylor actually in this video is one of the taller gymnasts that I've worked with. And she had a really tough time doing any of these on the floor, but just putting her up on one panel mat really allows her to go all the way through. You have some other athletes that are a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter that can do them on the floor, no problem, right? But sometimes people need a little bit of assistance just to get started here, right? Doing a little bit higher and working your way down, maybe a panel mat and a half, maybe a springboard, then you take half the panel away. You can allow someone to kind of slowly get in the groove for themselves all the way. Okay, so reps on this will be about 10. Okay, again, I really like three sets for this one because you can superset it with something else. And I think one to two days per week is pretty good. 
good. Errors on this one is gonna be not opening the hips fully. So what I mean by that is getting right to like this position here, not opening the hips up fully and just letting the legs bend a little bit too much, right, to get out in the front. So I think someone really wants that full extension here. And then the other one is going way too fast, right? Athletes will oftentimes find this struggle point like right here through the middle and they'll just kind of like rip in and out really fast. So really encourage that person to take that tempo of one second, one second to go through, one second to pause on this side, one second to go through, one second pause on this side and keep the eye line and vision with the ground too, right? Eyes are on the ground and then eyes are neutral here. So I really love these a lot. They're super easy. They're really great for young athletes to do who are just learning and they have a lot of really good transfer over to many other skills in gymnastics. Okay, number three, are gonna be some sort of extended hold. Now, what you just saw in the first two videos was a lot of active flexion of the lower core, right? So that's really important, we love that. But so much in gymnastics really demanding uh, perfect hollow neutral shapes or perfect arched hollow neutral shapes. And what I mean by that is you're static, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually set somebody up on a springboard and we're gonna have somebody be held down by their feet. So whether a friend holds them or they can have a partner hold their ankles, they can go under another block, they can go under a beam, they can go under a static surface, whatever else it is. And what you're gonna do is set somebody up so that their hips are on the springboard or the block or off the edge of a pit or something like that or a, a spotting block. And you're gonna make sure that they're only far enough out where they can maintain this open hip angle and keep the ears covered and, and Heather will lower down a little bit here but if she was really struggling with an arched back here and she was really sticking out her arms I'd actually want her to move up on the springboard because that would make it a little bit less challenging I'd rather get a perfect completely awesome shape with a little bit less uh, demand than the other way around which is say Heather was way too far off here she might be uh, piking her hips arching her back and keeping her ears uh, completely not covered at all so what all we're gonna do here is just a static hold right so she's gonna kind of come up here and just hold this position here for a solid 20 seconds, right? And when we were filming these videos, she realized these were much harder than she remembered. But essentially you can do these really, really well in every direction. So you can do these kind of front to back here. You can also do these in, a, in an arch hold as well or on a side hold. So I really like doing 20 seconds of each. So this would be a side plank hold here where again, she's keeping the hips open. She's keeping the ears covered. And if you were to look from the top, her shoulders, her hips, and her feet would all be in a nice straight line. So I really love these extended plank holds here. And then I really like these versions when we're kind of going on our back to work our lower core or our stomach to work our lower back, right? So all these are really good. I would do about 20 to 30 seconds here, probably two sets and 20 of each. So 20 on your back, 20 on your side, 20 on your stomach, 20 on your other side to really get a nice holistic core training here. So I really love these quite a bit. The tempo is gonna be about that 20 to 30 seconds because that's how much one uh, repetition will be and then two times per week is really good for these along with many other kind of basic shaping things so er uh, errors we're going to see here one the ears will not be covered up on here two the hips will be too far out like i said and they'll have that big arch in their back or three they're going to have their hips being closed so she would be sitting up and she wouldn't be open enough or here you would see you're kind of having a jackknife effect from the top down okay i think this is a hilarious still shot by the way <laughs> to see her face reeled in there um, but that's gonna be number three that's one of my favorites okay now we're getting to the last two this is by far and away one of my must do favorite drills. Okay. I really love this drill for two things. One is it has an awesome shape changing effect where you're actually challenging the core in and out. But two is it forces the athlete to use their entire body as one unit in a shape change, which is essential for gymnastics. Okay. So it's really hard and it gets that core strengthening effect, but it's also about core coordination, right? And sequencing, which I really, really love. And all you need is some space and foam rollers, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to have the athlete be on the foam rollers. So one can go kind of at their shoulders. If it's a little bit too hard, you can lower it down to here. Um, but the arms is really tough. And then anywhere on the thighs where it's appropriate. Okay, so here, we're gonna go all the way down and all the way up. So she's kind of sinking down to the ground. She's pushing up into a nice tight arch and she's rocking down into a nice tight hollow. Okay, so this is obviously the version where we're working on the lower back and some opening positions, but we would flip her over and we would have her do this exercise on her stomach, going from an arch to a hollow and pulling up in her lower core. Okay, so we're gonna go, and again, anywhere uh, based on the demand of the athlete. So if the athlete's a bit younger, they need some more help. Maybe you put the foam roller at their shoulder and maybe the other one down around their hips as they get better you can work those foam rollers farther apart and it makes it harder if an athlete's really advanced you can go on the elbows you can go on the knees back in here but we're going to go 10 times to an arch hollow trying to really hold on one second on the open and one second on the close okay about a two second tempo up and down is really good and one of the common errors you'll see if it's too far out and it's too hard you'll definitely see them piking their hips quite a bit we'll see the head and the ears pop out and the head will kind of poke out or we'll also see someone lacking tension right so by lacking tension i mean they're not really keeping that rigid nice straight body when they move back and forth and they're kind of loose in their core or loose in their legs so really focus on great form here okay lastly number one my absolute 
favorite is going to be loaded carries. And I know this is a sneaky one because there's probably about 300 other core gymnastics exercises you've seen like with planks and other things and leg lifts and tuck lifts and stuff. But I personally think that this is the most overlooked one. Okay. So loaded carries are going to be farmer carries. They're going to be uh, suitcase carries. They're going to be suit, um, you know, overhead carries. But essentially what we're doing here, when I pause this video, two really heavy weights in each hand are pulling down on her core. And the reason this is such a great core exercise is because it actually forces the core to work exactly how it's designed, which is bracing in a 360 degree manner while controlling breathing, right? That really is the most essential function of the core for many sports, but just overall in athletics. So these farmer carries really mimic some of that really heavy impact forces that happen on gymnastics. So you're going to get this really great core bracing effect. You're going to get a breathing effect with the diaphragm, right? You're also going to get some shoulder work here, and you're going to get some single leg stability on this outside glute med which is just a super big bonus. So I'm a massive fan of these, right? Real slow controlled steps all the way up and down. And it should be heavy enough where it feels as though they're almost going to wobble over, but they can handle it, right? So I really, really love these. These are farmer carries. A suitcase carry is going to be when it's in one hand. An overhead carry would be when maybe you're doing an overhead dumbbell and another one in a rack position. Those are great too. They all have different goals based on what you're doing, but some sort of a carry really should get in there. We'd probably go about 10 steps. We'd probably go about two sets. Again, a two second pause on each side. So leg comes up hold leg comes up hold and again we try to be doing these almost every other day if not daily if we could some variation of a loaded carry so maybe the error is here that we're going way too fast we're not having that pause there two is we have loose shoulders so the weights are really just hanging off their body and they're not really controlling that scapular strength and then having the chest dump forward if the weight is too heavy and they're not really able to handle it you'll see that chest fall forward and it'll be a collapsed rounded position we want the shoulders up tall and the chest really up tall as well so yeah those are super super effective and i think people should really be using those as well. If you're someone working in gymnastics and you want 30 hours worth of amazing lectures on gymnastic strength, basics, you know, balance beam, floor, bar technique, medical providing stuff, strength conditioning, June this year is going to have the 2023 shift symposium. So I had to mention that because I know a lot of people are asking about this. We'll also drop down in the comment section below. This is a three day live virtual event, 30 speakers, 30 amazing gymnastics lectures. It's really going to be a fantastic event and we have it all set up. We already have uh, registrations are pouring in. And if you're one of the first 150 people to sign up, if this video is uh, out past then or before then, I'm sorry, but um, you actually could win three full sets of tickets in a full year of strength conditioning program. So don't dabble on that one. Make sure you jump down and check it out. But for this video, just to wrap it up, I hope everyone really enjoyed that. And so what we're going to leave this with is just a couple things, right? Make sure you're doing these exercises consistently. Make sure you're doing these exercises on a regular basis so that they're actually making a training effect, but then also make sure you're doing a variety of exercises. You don't want to just do shaping or just do leg lifts or just do this. Mix it all in. There's so many good things that the core can work with. So hope you all enjoyed this video. And like I said, make sure to jump down rate review and subscribe and things like that so toss it up give us a comment give us a rating let us know what you think and make sure you subscribe put the notification bell on and then like i said that hashtag 24 shift you can be entered in to win something very very fantastic which might be might be tickets to the symposium which is over a 500 value so hope you all enjoyed this video and thanks for checking it out